This week on Across the Arrowverse, there's no defeating the big bad this time. Hi everyone and welcome to Across the Arrowverse. I'm Matthew Vos. And I'm Catherine Kay. This week we've watched the episodes Supergirl, The Fanatical, and the season finales The Flash, We Are The Flash, and Arrow, Life Sentence. Uh, before we get to those big ones then I think we should do Supergirl. Yep. Uh, which was a, a normal episode. I think we've got four more left after this one. Uh-huh. The Fanatical, so dealing very much with the people who would praise Rao. In yeah. previous episodes. What was he called? That dude's cult. Yeah. The cult of Rao, I think it was. Yeah. Or, yeah. 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 yeah Thoughts? It was... How did it? It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I enjoyed them coming back to the cult, or rather, I thought it was good that they came back to the cult, because mm-hmm. I think it's, it's probably going to be an important part of this story. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I enjoyed the episode where they set up the cult, and then we knew they were going to come back to it because we knew that Rain had taken that dude off yeah. to to worship her, help her. Co- Covil, his name was. Covil, that mm. was it. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> so we had um, the, the main story about the cult trying to make a new world killer. Yes. Which was quite interesting. And the, the, the defeating the girl with the rock, but then her not being able to give up the rock and then her bringing it off her... And it forcing Kara's powers to misfire. Yeah. I, I thought that was all quite interesting. And I feel like that's something that's going to come back to us. Yes. Whether it's something to do with this girl or the way the rock interfered with the powers. I, I thought it was interesting that it was almost like um, this world kill that they created was like some kind of uh, rip-off version. Okay. Because um, the powers seemed to go away immediately. Yes. And it, it was very much linked to being fused to that rock. Mm. It wasn't something that was innate within the person themselves. Yeah. So, and, and not yeah. powers like like uh, purity and pestilence um, had powers. This was just she kind of had rain Supergirl type powers. Yes, mm. exactly. Um, and I, I did kind of think that that girl, the, the girl that became the world killer, she'd been so brainwashed or mm-hmm. so into the cult mm-hmm. all the way up and got the stone and was becoming a world killer. And then a couple of... Um, a couple of sort of pleading to her better nature, and she's like, "Oh no, I don't want to be a world killer after all. <laughs> you have, you have taken me out of my cult mindset. Yes, please take the stone away." <laughs> and just like, you know, I don't know, I don't really buy it. <laughs> I buy it because it is again the thing we've seen, particularly in Supergirl, but we're seeing in all the shows, is it's about their humanity, their civilized nature inside that is going to overcome the power. That takes them over. Yes. We've had that with Supergirl in previous seasons, and we've been talking about it all this season with Sam inside yeah. Rain. And, and we actually saw that with particularly uh, Purity. Yes. The girl inside her. And this was just doing that beat again. Mm. It, it, it is definitely the theme of the season. Um, and particularly for this episode, identity yeah. was the big conversation. So the revelation about um, Jimmy being Guardian, yeah. James Olsen. Um, and that's going to be revealed and he him deciding to go public with it mm. very much on the back of the way the police treated him as a man of colour in America. Uh. Um, again, I'm feeling like this is the effect of, hey, if Black Lightning can do this writing, we can as well. And it's good. Yeah. This this was a h- harder way of doing it than they've done in the mm. past. They've addressed it sort of tangentially previously. I really liked here they, they laid on the fact of actually he is going to be treated badly and this is the way things normally go. And we had his conversation about, no, I want people to see me standing up and doing the right thing so that they are inspired. This is what a guardian can be. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, no. And, and and it also fits in with the theme, of, you were talking about themes, That's that whole, the battle with whether you should be public with your identity, mm. it, it's been one with we've seen played out on Flash and Arrow as well as Supergirl. Yeah, I, I quite like that between the three shows this season, we've had the discussion of why they don't go public for different reasons. For Supergirl, it's very much protecting the people around her. For The Flash, it's some of the same, 
but also I think his powers are so extreme. Mm. And whilst he is actually human, at least Supergirl is alien, so there's yeah. the, the powers come from a different source. Um, he wants to be able to fit into a human society. And then there's Arrow, who wants to be able to retire into a human society mm. eventually and actually take up a human life because he doesn't have powers. Yeah. So he can disappear away. Yeah. Mm, I like that there's a. I, I feel like there's a difference. I'm not sure I've explained the differences as well as I might. Yeah, but, but, but there's a start, there's nuances yeah. between them. Yeah. yeah. And whilst we're seeing that beat again and again and again, which is feeling like there's too much of the crossover in the writing, they are getting across why each show has its own personality. Yeah. And it's interesting as well that the the, the um, outcome of each of those mm-hmm. conversations has been slightly different. Like mm. Jimmy wanted to come come clean, to yeah. come forward, but actually the need for him to do so has disappeared. Yeah, Flash didn't want to come forward and hasn't come forward. Mm-hmm. And as we're about to talk about a little bit later, Arrow didn't want to come forward, but the choice has been denied him. Yeah, it, it was the last card he had to play in his hand. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I feel like James Olsen's lie to Kara hasn't been addressed. That he said to her, yes, I'm in the vault and no, there's nothing here. You're right. He, he does seem to have got off quite lightly about mm. it. She seems to be more angry about him having told Lena that she, that, um, that she asked, well, that Supergirl yeah. asked him. Yeah. Than she's about him lying to her at the time. I wonder if that's because she's feeling that she did a bad thing full stop by asking him to go. Yeah. And her feelings of uh, self-recrimination over asking him to go are outweighing whatever happened when he was there. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. But, but yes, but, you're right. He yeah. has. So far, he's gotten mm, off lightly. I, I expected this to split the group in two a bit more. Yeah, so. me too. Me too. What I, I mean, I don't like this storyline, okay. as I said last week, but what I did like was what I think is very human writing in that it clearly, this argument with her friend is clearly playing on Kara's mind so much that even when she's sort of on the job, in between the mm-hmm. on the job moments, she's banging on about it to her friends. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah, that, that, that. It's very real. Mm. You know, it's a very real and a very human reaction to falling out with someone, yeah. that, you know, with someone that you really care about. Mm. So. And, and I think the point they made is very right that when Lena finds out, and she will eventually, because everyone does, they're actually going to, it's going to be a problem. Yeah. Because she's going to know that she's been lied to for so long and that they've had this fight and she still didn't tell her. So it's yeah. going, to, going to be interesting. It's hard, isn't it? Because like, what, what, what genuine, like from a distance, mm. what genuine, I, I, what genuinely is the best thing for her to do? Because I think in terms of damage mitigation of her and Lena's relationship, right now, the be- if it was any other kind of secret, the best thing to do would be to fall on your sword, come clean, explain why you did what you did, but voluntarily proffer this information to her. Yeah. But mm-hmm. given who Lena is, mm-hmm. what Lena can do, mm-hmm. and what the secret is, that is a fuller risky strategy. Yeah, someone, so, someone so connected to the villains of this world, yeah, who can make the thing that kills you. Yeah, That's you're making a lot of trust you put in there. Very yeah. vulnerable, but not only. And if it was just a vulnerability for herself, mm-hmm. then that's one thing. But she's also bringing potential risk on the people around her. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's a very uh, really interesting, interesting quandary, mm. and and it's good that they're addressing it in this way. It's not yes. just revealing herself to the world; it is actually someone she cares about, and there are shades of grey to this. And Lena has got so many hang-ups from her past about mm. you know trust issues mm-hmm. that that it's possible that even if you know no matter how she reveals it to her, that this is going to go down badly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd yeah, be interesting to see what comes of it. Um, we end up with the trip of Monel and Supergirl to get a rock from space. It's a little convenient. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. It, yeah. It, it, that's going to be the subject of the next episode. But I was yeah. like, oh, okay, so we're finding a reason to put them in a space, a confined space for a period yeah. and see what happens. Uh, and I suspect it's going to be the thing if he tries to tell her, she tells him something about, I'm so glad we're just friends now. Yeah. Uh, and I really hope that is where it goes. Yeah. Because, nah. Okay. A good episode, though. I, I thought it did a, a lot of in-depth stuff with the characters that I quite enjoyed. Yes. Mm. Okay. The Arrow Life Sentence. Um, so this was the season six finale. 
Um, obviously, the end of the season, he fights Ra's al Ghul, he fights Malcolm Merlin, he fights Damien Dark, whoever it is, he beats them when they have a big fight on top of a warehouse, um, and then we all move on and we're all happy. Not this episode, though. Good God, no. This was a bit different than normal. Mm. Um, the, the big difference, Diaz is still around. Yeah. Our big villain is potentially going to be a villain next season as well. With possibly some new buddies? Yeah. Because did those longbow bandits that they were talking about, or whatever they were called, yeah. did they ever show up? Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm not sure. I thought they had when they went to the thing, but now I'm not so sure. See, I don't think they showed up, so I'm just wondering if this is foreshadowing of the names of some of the new villains for next season. So no, the longbow, longbow hunters weren't in the episode but were apparently coming to town. This new threat that has never been mentioned before, but is apparently worse than the League of Assassins. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, it, it almost feels like this set, this is a... This finale was actually a precursor to set up next season, rather mm. than actually being a finale of this particular story. Which I said last week, the the episode reminded me of a Game of Thrones season ender. The penultimate episode of the season is the big fights and lots of stuff going on. And then the last episode is all the setup for the next season. Yeah. And, and that feels very much like it was. But you've got 23 episodes to get this done in. You don't need to cram it all in the last episode of the season. It was quite a full-on episode, wasn't mm. it? I, I was... Very surprised at the the opening action sequence because it was a really good action sequence. Yeah. Everyone in the police station being done so early in the piece. It just I, it it made me worried that the rest of the episode was going to be all talking, mm. and most of it was. Yeah, it was, but I I didn't find it slow. Mm. <laughs> Having fallen asleep halfway through it, it was very late. Yeah, when, <laughs> when you say you didn't find it slow, you have had to watch it twice. Let's be honest to everyone. <laughs> I was I was so confused when I when, when I went to sleep during Arrow and I woke up in Made in America and I was just like what, what what's going on what's Arrow doing? <laughs> you mean American Made? That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yes, no, I I I, I thought I I didn't mind it being slow paced. It wasn't slow. No, no, I, I don't it. think it was slow. I just felt it was not punctuated by action it was just tension 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 and then more tension because suddenly we've killed a main character yeah yeah Mm. fair enough i i quite liked some of the directions they took okay i'm feeling more inclined to watch next season of arrow than i had oh interesting i i'm interested in an arrow where arrow himself is publicly out out Mm. as arrow Mm mm-hmm um, I'm intrigued by the setup of where it's going to go with Arrow in prison mm-hmm. because him just breaking out of jail is not really an option for him. Well, like like you said, they know who you are. So if I break out, you're then next in the firing line. Yeah, right? so, so, you know, his friends will end up in jail. Yeah. And also he wants the FBI in his city mm-hmm. to help defend from whatever um, Diaz is going down. Yeah. And I want the FBI in the city because I want to see more of the cool Agent Watson. Yes. I liked her. Um I don't have a name for her. Um, so, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, so that could be interesting. Yeah, I would thoroughly agree with all that. Um, I particularly liked... I, I like him going to prison having outed himself and talked about why he was doing the Green Arrow and what it was and clearing everyone else's name because it was a thing of people taking the fall for him again and again. yeah. I prefer your idea of him being part of Task Force X and the Suicide Squad. And I could still see it coming. Yeah. I can still see that being a thing. Um, it will be interesting to see where that goes. We're back on the, you know, your my son now has a step-parent. But at least that's fine because he's got a parent. I don't uh, quite follow the logic the same way they do, but fine. Um, and I'll be interested to see what they do with Laurel. Because yeah. they they haven't. Uh, she said, "I am different from your Laurel," and yes. and that is absolutely true. She is a very different character. I prefer this character. I do. I think it's more interesting, and I don't think she's necessarily come to the side of good. No. But there is a level of trust going on there now. So, is there a Laurel shaped hole in the Legends of Tomorrow? 
I'm not sure if I'm honest. Because with um, Captain Lance or Fomare Lance or whatever it was called, Lance mm. Dead, the the exploration of the differences of Laurels and her place in this world yeah. is that better done with Sarah than than anyone else. Given that they had Sarah pop up to sob in the corridor yeah, when her dad well, died. Yeah, we'll come to that in a second. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure she fits in that world. I think her power is too mundane, but is grand enough to work well in Arrow. To have someone who can do that level of damage quickly is a very useful thing. It's a fairly blunt instrument, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't know where they're going to go with that. Mm. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah. Because obviously she has always worked in Arrow when she became Black Canary. And I guess with Diaz still being around, she has that past relationship with Diaz. True, yeah, yeah, So yeah. that might come into play this next season. Mm. So, okay. Hmm. So yes, we had Quentin Lance. We've been talking all season, we expected him to die. We just fully expected him not to make it out of this. We did every single story we could with him this season. And pretty much every season, every story had been wrung dry. When he was there and, and they were like blat- blatantly having goodbye scenes, I was mm. like, oh, is he going to die? Oh, <laughs> <Catherine>. <laughs> I was like, sorry. But I, I, I think that's the best possible ending yeah. because I just felt they need to now put that character down. I, I <laughs> That is one way of putting it, Catherine. <laughs> I liked that he took the bullet for her. He wasn't just killed. Yes. And, and then they gave in or something. He did a heroic moment, which yep. is good. I agree. Um... I feel his death was a bit strange, how it was right now he's going to surgery, but he's dead in surgery. And we just don't see him again. I expected him to have a death scene. Dying in the arms or surrounded by people or something. Like, we just can't save him, but he's still awake and you can come and see him. Something like that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't know. And he didn't seem kind of dying enough no, when they were all saying goodbye to him before surgery they, they but... said he had a seizure and yeah yeah, yeah. a very Grey's Anatomy death a, a little bit yeah but yes we then had the return of Sarah Lance yeah. back into this world probably a very brief cameo I would imagine yeah um, but always good to see her because we do like her a lot yeah, Katie yeah, Lotz yeah. is very very good yeah, yeah. Um, the one thing they revealed about him that they'd never revealed before he's got a pacemaker that was Chekhov's spontaneous pacemaker to get us through a plot hole in this episode. That he has a pacemaker and Felicity can track it. So that's how she finds out where Diaz is. Yeah. I kind of just went with it. I was, I did think, when did he have that put in? I, I can't remember it. And admittedly, Arrow is not the one we've paid the most attention to. Yeah. So maybe. But it did feel like you could have mentioned this once or twice in the previous few episodes. Yeah. Just remind us of it. Yeah, so yeah. it doesn't come as like... Oh, that's convenient. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, of course, it was a trap. They were all really surprised when they turned up and all those lasers show up with the bombs. Of course it was a trap. It was so obviously a trap. I my, So my issue with that mm. was that Diaz was, Diaz was actually a bit on the back foot at that point. Mm-hmm. Man on the run. Mm-hmm. Like hell would he have had the time <laughs> or the tech just hanging her out to set up that incredibly complex bomb and laser combo. I'm like, come on, give me a break. Yeah. Yes, if he had been at the peak of his influence and power, mm. I'd have totally bought it. Mm-hmm. With everyone but taken not, down. Exactly. Yeah. But at this point, with half of his forces gone, and yeah. I, I don't buy that he would have had the ability to set that up. And the lasers came on after they entered the warehouse. So he had something in the warehouse that would trigger the lasers coming on, and the lasers would be the trigger for the bomb. Well, nah. I feel like you've missed a step there, <laughs> Diaz, sir. <laughs> also, did, did it ever really pay off on the whole Renee calling his daughter and having a fear of death thing? No, so... I, again, we've been talking, we think he's going to leave the series. Um, I felt like that was going to be him thinking he was going to die, which is what happened. Yeah. And then saying, no, I can't go through that again. I need to be here for my daughter. and walking away. Yeah. But we've not had the resolution of that. No. But I wonder if it's going to be first few episodes of next season. Yeah, maybe. I I, I felt there's a lot of non-conclusions. Mm. You know, that wasn't properly concluded. And, and they even hinted perhaps he might go and try and rescue that FBI girl. And end up blown up rescuing her or something. Right? It was just, it you know, was... again, give him a heroic death, fine, but yeah, exactly. It just felt a little bit um, not half-hearted. That's the wrong. They they didn't allow it to come to climax. 
That's <laughs> what I was trying say? to say without, <laughs> without saying that, but yes. Yeah. Overall, not a bad season ender. Like you say, it set up some interesting things for next season. I, I'm very interested to see what they do with Diaz because I'm I'm genuinely surprised he's not gone. Um, frankly, it was ridiculous for them to end up in a hand to hand fight. Yeah. Why Oliver didn't just stick an arrow in him in the first place? But are they going to evolve Diaz into some sort of meta human Razal Ghul magic user? That's where I feel it going as right. well, with those longbow hunters mm. and the sort of demonic shot of Di- that Diaz the, at the end. The, the, the dragon tattoo on his back. Exactly. And... I feel like this is going down into a dark, mystical route. Some sort of fantastical, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can can I just Go call on. out two, two points that okay. both amused me and that I had slight issue with? One, the whole getting of the information from Diaz's necklace. Yeah. Diaz's necklace's hard drive. Hey, Felicity has just whipped up the most amazing tech sniffer in my suit. And so the mere proximity of me to Diaz's necklace means I've now got all of this data from his okay. hard okay. drive. I mean, is that thing basically just a USB stick? Yeah, it seems to have its own power, if you can read from it. Uh, they have done the sniffer thing earlier this season. Yes, but it was well while the drive was plugged into a computing That's true. system, That's true. which I bought a lot yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm sorry, but yeah. I don't, I don't believe that if my, you know, my USB stick, I don't believe <laughs> that anyone walking past me Maybe can it's sniff powered. out its content. <laughs> but the other was the dreadful pun that Laura Lance made when, um, when she was talking about, you know, they had that film about they're talking about the film about the dog. Like so, oh, Diaz, old yellow. <laughs> and it was, and literally, I think maybe it was because I was watching it quietly whilst you were asleep this morning. I had the subtitles on, and they literally said it's old yellow. And then she went, <laughs> I was just like, oh, seriously, <laughs> seriously, what a dreadful, dreadful pun. <laughs> I completely blanked that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's move on to the Flash let's, before let's... this turns into we take apart Arrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the Flash, we are the Flash uh, again, season finale. And DeVoe himself even says there's no taking down the big bad this year. Um, which is a slight fourth wall break, perhaps. Mm. Um, but I, I liked it. Yeah. Um, I feel a little unfulfilled because we had this person who had all these amazing powers and we didn't get to see them this episode. It turns out last episode was the time we got to see him use them. Yes, you're right, because they were fighting DeVoe in his head. And whilst mm. DeVoe in his head was powerful, mm-hmm. he wasn't quite as powerful as DeVoe in the real world. It was all punchy-punchy. Yeah. And perhaps it is because they made him too powerful. No, all the all the different powers were interesting. Yes. In in each of their own episodes. But once you give someone all those powers, yes, he was pretty overpowered. And, so. and, and as they said, he... That he created those metas to gather those powers mm. specifically to make sure that the Flash couldn't beat him. Yeah. So they couldn't beat him in yeah. the real world. They had to go inside his head. Yeah. I just felt a little disappointed because I was, I was hoping there would be some really interesting thing with it. Yes. That scene last episode where he used all his powers was kind of cool. It was great. That, was, that, that is one of the peaks of the, the Flash so far, yeah. I think. Um, but what we did get was the evolution of Cecile's powers. Yeah. Which we, we thought was going to come and, and join all that together. So we had her being able to enter DeVoe's mind from halfway across the city. Yeah. And then in a pocket dimension. But fine. And take Barry with her to get into his mind. Interesting. Again, I feel like we could have done something more with it sooner than just suddenly in this episode we come up with a bit of tech. Was it me, or was the little, um, little mind, cerebral, cerebral thing, was that the same prop as they used in Supergirl when Supergirl uh, was? It's possible. Was taking them all into the the realm of rain, the valley of whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, it very likely is. I think it's the same prop they used for Cecile for her hearing hearing Joe when he dreams. Right. So yeah. One prop for them all. Yeah. <laughs> One prop fits <laughs> to all. Rule them all. Yeah. Um, it opened with a scene of the captain getting coffee, and all these problems go, and he then starts phoning people. Oh, oh, he's phoning Barry to give him his job back. Yes. I don't think the captain's ever had a scene on his own. No. I quite appreciated that. I was like, yeah, this guy has been a pretty good stalwart of this show. And he's a good guy. He's mm. not a stupid boss. No. I really appreciate that they don't 
write the yeah. bosses in this show as stupid idiots no. that we all have to overcome. That and, was and such you, an old trope, wasn't given it? Given Joe works for the police, you can't have the police being stupid. Yeah. Because yeah, he's yeah. got to be capable as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, I quite like that opening. Um, but the the big thing was going into his mind to try and re- release the positive good side of DeVoe. Turn, turns out that's dead. <laughs> Which was a pretty clear way to tell tell the message that this is now a bad guy that we can take down. Yes. Um, but Dibney's still alive in there. Yay! <laughs> I knew that was coming. Yeah, we, we, we've said, we although they gave him a proper thing and there was a hint that he might not come back, it always seemed likely, actually, he was going to re- reform to his original yeah. image. So. Yeah. Didn't... I mean, I don't but Do you not think that they made DeVoe in his brain... Up to look like a proper monster. Yeah, I I, I thought that was very well done. That like the Devo, the the inner Devo that yeah. was left, yeah, was a villain and a superhero less, you know, superhero realm villain, not just a yeah. bad person. You mean the one walking around, not the one who was dead. The one who well, was in his chair, at, well, like when before they found. Okay, the, when he was roaming around when he in the chair, roaming, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. like he was all yeah. like wizened and white and like. Well, what I felt they were really, really trying to channel because there were lots of Devos was the Matrix. Okay. And very much it felt like the Burly Brawl in the second Matrix film with all the Agent Smiths. E- even I've written Agent Devo yeah. Smith. I. I- I don't understand why they didn't reference it. Is it just because the reference is so visible there you can't reference mm. it because otherwise you're clearly stealing at that point? Yeah. But it was it was like this is that fight. Yes. <laughs> I thought it was interesting the the idea uh, and the threat that by placing Barry into DeVoe's mind or into the mind of the body that DeVoe is currently inhabiting that would give him um Barry's powers. Mm. Now, obviously, they didn't come through on that. Um, I'd have quite liked to see that and see them come through on that. I'm not sure it works like that in this world I, because I think he'd have the knowledge that Barry has. Yes. But Barry's powers come from his connection to the Speed Force, which is a physical, which connection. is a physical thing. I yes. don't think you could. I think you could take his knowledge of it, and maybe yeah. that would allow him to develop even more and so on. But I, I think I think you're right. Yeah. But I, I, that was a that that whole concept of the fact mm. that that we'd now put Barry in his mind. So maybe maybe even the knowledge, if you know. But like, I thought that was an interesting an interesting twist that they didn't explore. Yeah, like a side effect of the adventure that they were going on that yeah. they could have explored more. Mm. So we had Marlies joining them. Mm. Is the other thing, and and that's why they could have a showdown. It was important to have the showdown yeah. like that, but she was able to help them escape at that point and get into the pocket dimension. Um, you were hoping she'd become an actual villain herself. Yes, I, I don't see that happening now, no. and I also feel she was both overpowered and just a MacGuffin herself. I I agree. I mean, she obviously it, the story came to fruition. But I don't think they necessarily dealt with her as deftly as they might. Mm. I, I think there, there could have been more yeah. to her. I was also expecting her to... I mean, I kind of get her whole, find the good in him. Mm. He was a good man once. Um, but I kind of get that. But then she seemed to accept that the good was dead and that we yeah. just kill him now rather quickly. I, I, I The way I read that, because I had the same thought, but I read it that she... Always thought that was the case, but had to know for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And had to at least try before taking him down, mm. a la Luke and Vader. Yeah. But I, I also see that there's a... I don't think there's a darkness in her, but there's a single-mindedness in her. Like, mm. that she was more mm. than willing to put the C- Cecile through whatever Cecile had to go yeah. through whilst giving birth so that they could bring their plan to fruition. Yeah. All Marlies cared about was bringing their plan to fruition. Mm. Cecile's pregnancy malarkey that was just not not yeah. an issue for I, I thought that was quite interesting it's a very sort of cold mm-hmm. um clinical way of dealing with the problem so, so i don't think there's a badness in her no but there's most definitely a a single-mindedness that might lead her to quite harsh behavior yeah i, I found her wrapping up harry's storyline with here's a bit of tech it'll restore your friend yeah a bit convenient it was a little bit like oh just like that oh good yeah. thank you very much yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I would have expected her to be working with, yeah, with him. 
Uh, you know, like I, I could, I'd have bought it more if we'd have seen it after she'd been doing something with him to implement the tech yeah. herself. And then been like, well, this this is the best we can have. Yeah, uh, and it, even a it'll take months, but we'll work towards it because then next season you can see how she goes for a few episodes, and then either they finish that and she leaves, or she yeah. stays on because she's found her place. Yeah, more of an ongoing mm. thing than just a bit of tech. I'm off to go and help people. Yeah, it was pretty heartbreaking with Harry oh, it throughout was. it, um, particularly where he insisted on having the helmet on to help them that one last time. Pretty heartbreaking. And then it's like it powered down. Yeah, just gone. Yeah. Mm. It's very heartbreaking. And like, whilst, you know, because I think having him come back and have a heart and be mm. in touch with emotions and go to his daughter, I mean, they have set that up quite nicely. Mm. You know, that that's um, the bomb episode. Mm. with Oh, Flash Time. Flash Time, mm. which had his daughter in and the, the problems between, you know, that was... That was obviously another one setting up this Absolutely. this whole yeah, thing, yeah, and that yeah. was that was lovely. Mm. And 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 I really like this. I love the relationship between him and Cisco, and I think you know the the, the fact that Cisco is so heartbroken yep. by the by the his Harry, his because his Harry is the the yeah. Harry that can interact with him on the similar level. Yeah, and, and this isn't his Harry no. anymore. Uh, yeah, very very heartbreaking. Yeah. We did get a great Star Star Trek reference in there. With it, he comes back and he says, "I have been and always shall be your friend," yes. which is a Kirk, uh, Spock's death from Wrath of Khan. Yeah. But then you have Cecile going Star Wars, <laughs> 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 and it reminded me we didn't mention it last week, but they used the word "frell" last week as well. Did they? So they had a Farscape reference last week. Nice. It's, yeah, this show knows its sci-fi history. Nice. Um, I thought all our, our supplementary characters had good moments. They did have a thing of everyone can help out here to do a thing. Um, particularly Iris being the pillar of strength to everyone. And yeah. talking about strength without faith. Yeah. I just thought that's the Iris we've enjoyed all season. And her leader. moment is that. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. She was really good. Really good. Mm. Um, and, and Dibney just gradually stepping up as he goes through it. And then having his moment where he clears his head and talks about all the shrimp. Yes, uh, and then they run out of there with him looking like a cape on Barry's back. He was amazing. Excellent. That's what we've missed from him for the last few weeks. Did you clock that when Dibney turned into Hero Dibney, mm. he had a police badge on? Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, nice. So obviously, in his mind and his heart, yeah, he- Hero Dibney is back on the police force. Oh, how nice! I, I thought that was lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, uh, one of our ongoing stories this season didn't get wrapped up. We had a single line that might refer to Killer Frost, but that's it. Mm. We had Cecile just doing something about Tommy, he's always been this way. There was a line, just something along those lines, and that seems to have been... And it sounded like, the way they did the voice, it sounded like Cecile was channeling Killer Frost... That's one of my notes. I was mm. like, has Cecile just got Killer Frost mind? Mm. But yes, yeah. I, I thought She's it was in there. very interesting that they hadn't wrapped that up. Yeah. So that's going to be another part mm. next season. And clearly there's, I, I think next season we're going to have more about Caitlin's past. Yes. I think is what that goes to. And I'm glad they haven't just wrapped it up because I feel like that's a story that will do well with a bit of room. Yes. A, a bit of time to actually go to her hometown, to speak to her parents, to understand mm. what she's repressing. Yeah. If they'd just done it in 10 minutes here, it would have been a little disappointing. It, it would have been a waste. Yeah, absolutely. And quite frankly, they have 24 episodes a season to fill. So they do. They need the to time keep something to back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the end of the episode then wraps up two of the big ongoing stories, one of which was Cecile has a new West child. Yeah. Good. <laughs> And the other bit is the mystery girl is not that child grown up. It is the daughter of Barry and Iris. Yeah. Wearing the jacket Iris wore when she was a speedster. Nice. And when Barry took out the satellite that was crashing down onto the city, she comes and helps him. Um, So we see him racing as fast as he can and doing a sonic punch to blast the thing out. Time rewinds. And we then see her streak next to him. Her streak, which has the colours of Barry and Iris's streaks in there. Nice. A bit of the purple, a bit of the yellow. Yeah. Very nice. And she then comes and punches it with him. Is it that her... So she comes in and tells him who she is and she's made a big mistake. Is her big mistake rewinding time and helping her dad so he doesn't die? 
Is this her flashpoint? Yeah. Is is Iris already pregnant with Nora and mm. she grew up without her dad because he died there and she's decided to change it? That would be a great way to do the next season. It would be interesting, to, to, wouldn't To view, it? like you say, flashpoint from within the time that's been changed. Yeah. Barry should have been dead now, so that might have consequences. Yeah. I'd like that. That that That's a very good call. Because, mm. yeah, because it doesn't necessarily mean that DeVos won. It just means that in in the correct timeline... Mm-hmm. Time A, time yeah. A, or, or a variant, because we can't necessarily say it's the correct timeline, because mm-hmm. we've already had a different true, timeline true, true, true. far in the future... Yeah, I, I, I would I would happily watch that. That yeah. would be an interesting thing to explore. But, of course, we do know that at some point Iris will write an article about Barry that says the Flash disappears in crisis. Mm. So, maybe. There's, there's a lot they could do from this point because Nora is Barry's mum's name. Yeah. And is not typically the name of Iris and Barry's children. Iris and Barry tend to have twins who become supers in their own right. So this could be she is one of those twins with a different name. It could be she's another child. She's a new invention. There's a lot they could do from this Mm. point, and they've also not told us what her mistake is. I suspect the writers know. Yep. And I just... The the camera work, or or the special effects work they did to show him racing and then to unwind it and show her there as well, it just implied... Not just we're we're giving you an extra insight. You know those, those things at the end of, like, the sixth sense where you see everything and you suddenly understand all yeah. the all the twists that's happened. I, I didn't think it was like that. I thought the rewinding was important. Yes. So. Interesting. Mm. But Nora, we now know her name. We now who, yeah. know who she is. She's clearly a speedster. She's got her mum's speedster outfit. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what comes of her. And, and it'll be interesting to see what type of character she becomes because mm. she had had some significantly dark seeming facial expressions when she's popped up in the past yeah not necessarily getting on with everyone so it'll be interesting if they merge it with uh the legends because obviously we also had our legend cameo from wally in this episode yeah um i found my place in the legends Mm. where i wasn't in team flash thanks wally um he's better in the legends yes (laughs) much better off there but is he now our link so we can actually do stories across two timelines and we could perhaps even see, like, they go forward or something and see what's, what Nora has changed in the future and to understand the new yeah. timescape. Yeah. I'd quite enjoy it if, if episode season, what's that, season five next season? Season four? Season five, I think. Five. Episode one is actually 20 years hence, and we see Nora grieving over Barry. And it turns out she goes back. And we, we see it from her perspective, everything we've just had, something like that. And then we start seeing a Lost or Arrow style back and forth of two timelines. Mm. It could be good. So, The Flash and Arrow have finished their seasons for the seventeen eighteen TV season. We've got four episodes of Supergirl left. Mm-hmm. Um, we are now going to be on hiatus for two weeks. Yay. Three weeks? Some weeks. Um, and what we're expecting to do is that we'll come back and have three episodes to binge and catch up on. Mm-hmm. So we'll do one episode where we cover all them. Nice. And then we'll have one episode left, which is the Supergirl season finale. Way. So when we come back, we will be very quickly through Supergirl. Yes. So it'll be interesting to see where Supergirl goes. Yes. I think the show will benefit from just binging it and watching that finale all in one. I, I think so, because I, I'm, I've i enjoyed the last couple of episodes, mm. but I felt a little bit like they're treading water. Mm. So I, I'm now feeling quite anticipatory yeah. for the build-up to the big big finale. So mm. I'm quite looking forward to binging those three when we come back from holiday and then yep. chatting about those and then having a real focus on what I hope will be quite an exciting finale. Yeah. Coming back from honeymoon, you mean? Yay! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the... Uh, we had a few episodes a while ago that seemed to have big impacts and big changes going on. Mm. And we've had a couple of episodes without much change. Just, I think, like we said for Flash and Arrow a little while ago, setting pieces on the board. Yes. It'd be quite nice to see what actually comes of them. Agreed. Mm. Agreed. I mean, especially for me, the the prospect that Rain is becoming immune to kryptonite and where they're going to go with that. Mm. I, I'm looking forward to seeing that ramp up because surely by next episode she's going to um, break out of the invisible Possibly. box. Mm. Yeah. So we'll see what comes of them. Yes.
So that wraps us up for another week. If you have thoughts, questions, or comments, you can use the hashtag ATAV on Twitter. Or you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram as Eloquent Gushing. If you want to help support us, please check out our Patreon page where you can get access to exclusive content across all our shows. Go to patreon.com slash eloquentgushing. And don't forget to visit the homepage, eloquentgushing.com, where you can find the other shows across the network and subscribe to our weekly newsletter with all the goings on. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you across the hourverse. Across the Arrowverse is an Eloquent Gushing production. For more shows you'll love, please visit eloquentgushing.com.